Before we get started, I'd just like to uh, thank my Patreon supporters, my patrons, for uh, making this review possible. There's a link in the description below if you want to join. Otherwise, just enjoy the review. What's up, guys? It's Charles here with Rocket Punch Army to do a review. You guys get bored of me saying the same thing all the time. Uh, well, we have here the Dual Blade Swordsman. This is made by Joy Toy, and the brand is called Dark Source. I almost said Dark Sauce. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, listen, I don't know the backstory with these figures. I just thought it was really BA looking. So, uh, and plus the uh, pilot figure, and yes, this does have a pilot figure, it's not a sentient robot, uh, kind of looked like me. He was bald, has a little beard, sort of, and glasses. So, that's probably why I picked it up. But on top of that, just look at it. It's pretty crazy looking. We're going to take a look at the box. It comes in a thick, you can see it's corrugated. It's like really thick uh, cardboard. I wouldn't say it's like high-end feeling cardboard, but it is thick cardboard. And on the back, it does show a picture of the pilot from behind. If we scroll up, we see the rest of the uh, figure here. We are going to take a look at the figure, obviously, but it is 11 inches tall, the mech unit itself. It's got a 2.95 inch pilot figure. Everything's made out of plastic, believe it or not. This is the thing I had mentioned before that I was going to review something not Goken. This is definitely what I was talking about. There's no metal. doesn't make it any less cool. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll pick some more of these up. We'll see. But, um, yeah, it's highly articulated. Uh, has some assembly required. Yeah, so enough of the blabbing with the stuff. I was obviously reading from the notes here. But this is the figure, guys. Wow! And you probably already saw it when I started the video because I was thanking you guys for making the reviews possible and stuff. But here he is again so we can take a look at him. I have to say, I love the way it looks. Like there's always something to be said about shiny robots that have no imperfections on them. But there's also be, there'll also be, there also is something to be said about robots that look nice and dirty and used. In other words, more like real uh, mecha instead of the you know, super robots we've come accustomed to seeing on this channel. One of the things that really struck me about this figure was the fact that it does come with a pilot. Um, it is a 124 scale. Let me see if I can open this. I gotta say, everything is like sticky. Uh, I don't know, but very, very frictiony. Let's put it that way. But you can tell it's not because of the tolerances, and more because of like the, the paint they use for all the weathering. It's that kind of like tacky feeling. It won't come off on your fingers, but it's kind of tacky when you're holding the robot for a while and then you like go to let go and like your fingers feel like they're stuck to it. So it's it's like that. It's probably some type of enamel. But you can see the pilot in there, and like I said, it kind of looks like me, like a much older version, I guess. Even though I'm already sort of on the older side compared to a lot of you viewers. But uh, tell me that doesn't look at me. If you guys have seen me in the videos, I'm not going to show my face. I'm not going to turn this camera around. But just believe me that that uh, kind of looks like me. And it's 124 scale. Um, I do have something 124 scale here, which is this. And I, I want to take the opportunity because this was like a long time in the making. I don't know if you guys in my Chachi Power channel saw me building this, but I, wa I wanted to show it off. Uh, it has nothing to do with this review, but it is 124 scale. These little things are metal, all those little letters. I used automotive paint. I even put the little metal uh, logos on there. Very tough thing to make probably the most uh, hardest the most hardest uh, kit I've ever had to do and it's been going on for like six years I still haven't finished it but anyway here's this dude again let's just check out the uh, well actually let's check out the figure is he 124 scale then again Japanese scale models are usually a little smaller than you would expect let's see yeah definitely way too big it's supposed to be a 24 scale model Oh, or maybe that's a 125th, 126th, uh, the little Cosmo there for the Ultraman. Um, but anyway, we're just going to go by what it says on the box, 124 scale. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and get this pilot out of here so we can take a look at the figure. We'll take a look at the pilot, obviously, in just a moment. I didn't mean to throw you there, dude. But, all right. So, um, very hard to move certain parts. Like I said, the paint kind of uh, is, is tacky. Uh, but look at this thing. I'm looking at the viewfinder here, and it looks so dark and sinister. It's kind of like it looks great to me on this um, on this viewfinder, but it's actually I don't know. There's like a a tinge tinge like this. The what's the least amount of tinge possible, uh, and that would be the amount of green it has. 
right? And there's like I'm noticing it now under these lights. There's there's like brown weathering going on. I didn't notice that before. There's like rust on the edges. I love stuff like that. You know, I love real mechs. I'm actually creeped out by real robots, like those things with the horses that they try to kick over and stuff. In that video with the Kevin dude, that those robots freak me out. But like something that you can pilot is really awesome. Now, one of the reasons I did like this is because it does remind me of something that I loved, which is other robots, Japanese robots. And I'm sure you guys know, already know what I'm going to show you. But this, does it not remind you of a scope dog? Right? Uh, this was one of the only animes that I've watched, you know, the, and, and it was very, um, <laughs> what's the word? Very, uh, uh, I don't know the word. Very, you know, like you have, it's very involved. Uh, with the realism and stuff like that like for example this dude um, the fuel or whatever it is that powers it's been a while since I watched it but the fuel can go bad you know so you gotta keep changing the fuel or something like that something with the liquid that runs through them you gotta change them so I always thought that was cool that they put those type of limitations and overheating and different uh, engines that run these things I love that I love that because uh, yeah in real life that's how it should be things break down things are heavy things don't move as quick but I figured I would show you this because it is very reminiscent of this, and the pilot would go in there. Actually, this goes up. By the way, this is made by Takara. Takara, can you please make stuff this beautiful again? Like, why did they not re-release this stuff? Why do they not put this much amount of effort, uh, this much amount of effort, does that sound right? Into, for example, Masterpiece Transformers. Okay, I get it. The plastic on this uh, is not like as flexy but this is not at all something that what I would consider brittle but it's beautiful do re-releases please please okay beautiful Takara thank you and it also reminds me of this right here I could not prep the camera to be uh, even height with this no all right well let's go ahead and adjust that um, I picked this up after watching uh, Avatar or even before I don't even know it doesn't matter I have it so you got the little dude in there. Again, another mech type thing. This is realistic too, I guess. You know, in the movie, uh, you know, they did uh, their best to make it as realistic as possible. And it was awesome because this thing would walk through the woods and step all over everything. Really cool. So uh, I think these guys uh, were also, maybe the designers uh, were also into, you know, scope dogs and stuff. And maybe those mech warrior, whatever those mech computer games are, I'm sure they got some kind of... Uh, uh, inspiration from uh, Japanese stuff. But anyway, back to this figure. Yeah, I can't stop looking at this thing. I had it in the box for a while. When I first got it, put it away. And I stopped. So we're going to go over a few things. We're just, you know, trying to get over the looks of this thing, which is amazing. And then we'll get into the little nitty-gritty details. Alright, so there's a way to make this guy look even more B.A. If you don't know what B.A. means, it means badass, okay? Uh, so we got to attach some weapon stuff. I got the box here. You can hear it rattling. Um, oh, damn it. Alright, so in the box you get these two big gigantic swords. Am I zoomed out? No, of course not. Um, these, I, I guess they're, I mean they look nice. They got that rust look to them. They probably have the least amount of detail out of everything, but I like the way they made the just this edge right here more silvery. So, like in case this was all like army colored, through usage and cutting, the paint has worn down to show the silver. Beautiful, love it. Both of them are just like that. You also get a little baggie, <clears throat> which has all the little bits. Like I'm talking teeny things. Like, wow, this is stuff you're gonna lose like right away. But anyway, the pilot came in here. It's got his little gun. Little belt, a couple of packs, grenade packs. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, wow, like really tiny stuff. Are these knee pads? What is that? Anyway, we'll find out. And if the pilot figure also came in there, and again, kind of dig this guy because he's bald, has a beard, and he looks pretty tough. And let's see if he stands up. I was about to print a little 3D stand for this guy, but as you can see, he can stand well on his own. All right. Um, so it looks pretty cool. We are going to show you the helmet before I move on to the robots. Get a, this dude 
squared away. Uh, the only thing with the helmet, it like kind of scrapes down on his nose, so I'm afraid like it'll take away the paint. Unless his, his unless his uh, plastic is made out of the skin color, but that's what he looks like like that. And do the instructions show me what to do? Oh, speaking of instructions, guys, you do have to be careful. I'm going to show you this in a second, but there's a warning here when it comes to posing the robot itself because uh, I didn't read the instructions at first and. I almost broke it. So this is the stuff to build the robot. It doesn't show anything about the guy. So I'm going to take a chance and just try and figure this out myself. So I'll be back in a moment. I wanted to actually show you guys what I'm doing. So basically I'm attaching all these little bits and pieces, even the gauntlet. Like, could they not have just molded the gauntlet on there or maybe uh, glued it at the factory? It just, like, it's a lot of little tiny pieces. Like, like, what is all this stuff? Does stuff go on his helmet? No. Like, way too many things. I'm going to get lost here. Let's see if we can put this here. And the tabs, little nubs are really teeny. I'm not even sure if I'm putting in the hole here. There we go. And his pistol, where does this pistol go? Well, I guess the pistol might go here, right? That would make sense. Have the pistol there. I don't know. I'm not even going to bother putting the rest of these things on. They're going to get lost. Really. Yeah, so really cool that they include uh, all these little pieces, but I'm going to lose them. Now, see? Look at that. Uh-oh. Lost that one. And where's the other gauntlet? Here it is. So definitely not something I want to mess around with uh, too much. The belt, uh, you do have to pop off the waist to get the belt on. So All right, so let's uh, go over articulation. All right, we're going to pop this off since so we're not going to use this anymore. Um, we got the head, I guess on a little ball joint, the way it moves here like that. Let me zoom in since he is a tiny figure. And we got the arms, right, and then the elbows. And we got the wrists. I can't believe those little swivels this tiny on this little thing. And we have the upper uh, chest, right? Very ab crunchy, I guess. Not like a whole lot of movement, but it's got movement, right? Then we got the legs, they do come out, you can see the ball joints right in there. Again, this figure is also tacky from holding on to them. Um, we got the rotating thighs. We got the knees, double jointed, right here. So they go way back, but then the knee looks really weird, doesn't it? And we got the little uh, swivel feet and a little hinge. That's beautiful. Oh no! Look at this. He's got toes. The toes, I'm afraid to push on them. They're really small PVC toes. They do uh, have a hinge there. I don't know if you can see that, but I don't really want to force it because I can't imagine the pins in there being very strong anyway. And, of course, his weird-looking hand here. And this is what he looks like with his little gun. All right, so we've seen enough of this little dude. We're going to put him inside in just a moment. We're going to check out um, the big robot there. So we start putting everything together just to make them look uh, better. It's got all these parts. You can see they're in like a bunch of little baggies. I don't know why they chose to do it this way. You got to rip open the baggies. And then the booklet does show you how to put everything together. And it's in Spanish, but I think I can figure it out. All right, so, all right, that's the swords. And this shows you how to put together those sword pieces and then hook them onto the back. So I'll get started on that. I feel like I just broke open a big box of Legos. There's a bunch of pieces everywhere. And I really, honestly, I have to just give props to the... Uh, my hands feel grainy. Maybe the, some of the paint is coming off. I just don't see it. But um, I do have to give props to the people at the factory for... You know, they got... Who knows how many of these they got to do? Right? They got to sit there and make sure everything looks nice and weathered. I love the way this looks. Just look at that. The edges have a little like nice bronze look then they have to airbrush some of these canisters here I mean imagine what that how, how much time that takes <laughs> I would think like after like the 10th one I'd be like I'm done dude I'm done let me go alright guys I think we're gonna have to take a moment and just be stupefied by its beauty the way I am right now look at this thing unbelievably beautiful I, I don't think it's capturing on camera how beautiful this thing is for some reason it looks really gray on my viewfinder, but the colors 
it's just like this drab green but it's really gray but as you can see I put all the armor on so where, do, where are the armor pieces we got the armor on the arms the gauntlet whatever and the shoulder pad we have uh, where else we put the stuff back here I'll show you that in a second um, we put his gun on his hand if we turn it around we will be able to see the tank that I put on his butt for some reason everything is really difficult to tab in I'm gonna cough <coughs> excuse me everything's difficult to tab but for some reason the butt one is really loose so I don't know what he's been doing but the swords here right look check out how they're like on the swing arm um, really cool looking they almost look like wings and you can bring them forward to slash people let's see if we can show you how to do that and bring them forward this way and whatever you know you know what I'm talking about and I can't go further than that but you get the idea everything's kinda hard to tab in only because of the tolerances with the paint but I'm sure it'll loosen up over time and even the tackiness um, I wonder if that'll seize in there with the tackiness um, I like this little thing up here I don't I don't even know what it does it's just like a missile launcher and for some reason I cannot go higher than this um, but it goes around to the front as you can see here and you can shoot his enemies and I love the little strobing eyeball so like that's his little way of seeing out of this mech here so so far I've had nothing really bad to say about the robot or the mech itself um, it's not perfect alright let's get that out of the way now that we've seen everything, it looks awesome, of course. If you have it on display, people are going to be like, Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so awesome. But it's not perfect. No toy is actually perfect, except GX71, of course. But, you know, um, and even then I modified that one. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, it's not perfect. So it's it, it looks great. Uh, as far as that is concerned, if you're worried about how it looks, it's going to kick butt in your display case. But there's a few things. All right. First of all, the tackiness of the paint uh, is a little bit annoying. Even though it's not coming off of my fingers, it leaves like a weird feeling in my fingers. So I, maybe it's just the um, it, the paint stuff that evaporates after a while. You know, um, who knows when they made this, and they may not evaporate. Second is the inconsistency in in which things, the way things tab. Some things tab in very. Uh, hard like a lot of friction some really loose like the tank in the back and another thing is what we're going to get into with the articulation is that some of the ratchets are either almost non-existent and some of them are like very existent like to the point where you're like is this a really uh, or is this really a ratcheting point um, we'll start off at the top I mean, I showed you this. It's it is like a little playset, like a little Lego playset, not Legos, but you know, like those things that you tab together. So everything tabs in, and of course, that leaves a lot of options. Anywhere you see a hole, right, allows you to peg something. I believe they're five millimeter pegs. I don't have a multimeter here because I'm not a scientist, but um, you can probably peg everything all over the place wherever you want, uh, which opens it up to a lot of uh, you know play value um, and these things anywhere like I said anywhere really just moves I'm not gonna move them too much because I don't want to loosen up my stuff uh, but you guys get the idea right and this thing right here you can see it, it is ratcheted I, I think it even shows a picture of this piece you'll notice the arm there's a space right there and I can kinda push it in but it won't really help with the ratcheting so you, you see what I mean see and then this one is really tight you know it does ratchet like it doesn't fall right and then we have the arms which soft ratchets you can see the ratchets right there um, hopefully they don't wear out over time but then check this out when I try to move the arm it's like ah, ah sounds really crazy and this one I don't whoa that one's even worse see what I mean and you got the waist here the waist, I can't really, there's like a joint you can see in there, I can't really tell what, oh there we go, it's a big ball joint it looks like. Really big ball joint looking kind of thing. Oh, I'm cutting up his leg over here with the sword and scratching it, awesome. Um, you got the waist, but the articulation, the amount of articulation, because due to that huge ball, is amazing. I did show you the little strobing face here, it is tabbed at the top there. Um, you do have bicep swivel, you do have the elbows, which are pretty soft and the hands 
the wrist, I should say. Uh, speaking about the wrist, you do have to be careful. One wrist will only swivel side to side, and the other wrist will only swivel up and down. So don't try and sw like spin this on the hand end. You can spin it on the top, but not the hand end because it will not work. Don't try and force it like I did and almost break it. It will only swivel this one side to side, this one up and down. I guess the up and down is just so you can hold the, the gun. You know how people have the crooked wrist when they're holding guns. Um, and we move down to the fingers. They're completely articulated. Every little joint. Okay? There's only three fingers. The only thing is mine. Is it this one? For some reason the hole is elongated. Can you see that? I don't know what that is. I guess when they tried to drill it out they made it elongated. It does stay there. I'm afraid I'm going to lose it. See, it kind of tabs in way too easily, so I don't mess with that too much. I can just fill it and re-drill it, and I'm a poet and don't know it. And we move on to the move on to the legs. These, look at this. I, okay, let's use superhuman strength. Whoa, that doesn't feel good at all. I mean, there's creaking and everything as I'm trying to do it. I don't like the way that feels. Probably won't do that again. And we have this that swivels we have oh boy we get to the knees there's a lot of play in the ratchets and then the knees are kind of like soft it almost feels like eh you know doesn't feel that good and then you have like a secondary why even bother it's a secondary joint right here um, and then of course you have well you have this that's pretty cool then you have the toes and the feet on a ball joint so a lot of articulation there's no way to say this has very little articulation but it doesn't feel fun I like when articulation feels fun like on a nice chogo king with soft velvety die cast joints uh, this is not one of those things and again this stupid thing is falling down I wish there was a way to toughen that up maybe there is I just don't see any uh, visible screw holes so maybe it's not but yeah, so figure really cool aside from those little things. And you can see that, oh, here, I didn't go over these. These, unfortunately, this one's a little tougher, but this one is like, meh, right? So it kind of makes him like to pose to stand, even though he will stand. It just you know, takes a little effort to uh, get everything situated where it needs to be. And what else we're we gonna look at? Oh, so the figure. Well, actually, we're gonna open this. This is tough. Always open the top first. Don't try and squeeze this one out like I did. Otherwise, just scratch the top here. Um, it's a little difficult. You want to hold it right up here. Can't even see what I'm doing. Right up here as you hold up, and just take your time because again, the paint is making it very tacky and very frictiony. And then this piece would come down. Whoops. And the inside, very reminiscent of a Votoms or Scope Dog, whatever. Okay, just a lot less space. There's no control bars or handles or anything like that for him to hold on to. So it doesn't really matter how you put him in there. But it, well, it does matter. If he's not in a sitting position, he won't fit. So let's go ahead and get him in a seated position. And we can cross his arms since he's not going to really be holding anything. And stick him in there. Now, of course... Like all good pilots, he should have a helmet on, but no. Actually, you know who he looks like? Walter White. It's Walter White selling meth from robots. Who's going to mess with Walter White now? He's the one that knocks. All right. I think that's it, guys. <laughs> uh, weird review. Uh, at least I got a little bit of energy today to go ahead and do this, but I don't know. I think I might pick up more. I'm not going to give up my Chogokin. All right, don't worry about that. But I, I don't know what it is about this robot that I like. I really don't like newer stuff, uh, especially really modernized looking stuff like this. But I enjoyed this one. So maybe I'll pick up more. But this is probably the, the one of the nicer ones out of the uh, series. But you can pick them up at BBTS. That's where I got this. Uh, so link is in the description below. The price is not too bad. I mean, for what you get, all the uh, pieces and articulation and paint and everything, and it, it's like seriously an attention grabber and a display case. So if you're into that stuff, um, you should definitely grab one. 
so aside from these little nitpicks like this, this is this is annoying. I I will I will admit. Hopefully that there's a fix for that. But uh, yeah, so that's really the only bad bad thing about it. Because tight joints are tight joints. I mean they'll loosen up after a while. But this is just loose right out the bat, and uh, right off the bat. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, guys, leave them below. If you're enjoying the videos, please, uh, if you get a chance, if you can, uh, sign up for my Patreon. Otherwise, keep watching and enjoy the videos, guys. This is awesome. I love doing this stuff for you guys. And uh, yeah, that's it. Till next time, guys. Bye bye.